it worked, yes! You know those nights when it's cloudy, but there are also some windows of opportunity in the sky? But they are so fast that you can't grab your telescope and place it outside because while you are connecting the things, the clouds roll in again, destroying completely your observation night. And in those kind of nights, not even the simplicity of a Dobsonian telescope can save you. Especially if it's cold outside and even worse if you have sore throat as I had that night. Which means you are not in the mood at all and usually you say, forget it, I will do it another night. Well, there was an exception. This little smart telescope called the Dwarf 2. And once again, it saved my night. And as I have a better neodymium filter, which is great working with my Dobsonian telescopes, I decided to give it a try in the Dwarf 2 smart telescope. To do that, I needed to use two adapters together so that I could fit my 2 inch filter in the Dwarf. If you wanna check it out, you have the links of all my gear at the description. And with everything already prepared, let's see side by side with and without the Bader Neodymium filter. But first things first, so let's unscrew the Bader Neodymium filter from my imaging train. But as it is stuck, I have to use my wrench tool to take it off. Now let's place it on the dwarf using my two adapters together. Now we have a combo of three pieces, the filter and two adapters. But we need to use the filter holder, which is one and a quarter inch, so we just have to screw the combo to the holder, where it says telephoto lens. And as it has a magnet, it will stick perfectly to the Dwarf Smart Telescope. Now let's compare both side by side. But first, of course, we have to do the calibration, which is pretty fast. Then select the object to go to, in this case M42 the Orion Nebula, and the Dwarf will find it easily. Then set the exposure to 15 seconds, the gain to 80 and the infrared to IR pass. But don't forget to set now the number of exposures, which means the number of frames to stack, and I chose 99, which is around 25 minutes total. Ok, right out of the gate, we can notice a much darker background in the image with a filter at the right. So at the left, without a filter, the background is brighter, but also noisier. However, the magic happens when the first stacked frame appear. BAM! Two amazing images of the Orion Nebula just after a few seconds. But you may be wondering. Ok Tiago, but the image at the left without the filter seems more detailed. And yes, you are right. But wait a bit while the dwarf works together with the filter. Remember that the use of filters as they cut some light the more they cut, the more exposure time you will need to get a better picture. And that's what we are doing now. But don't miss the details. Look how good the brighter stars at the right, using the filter, are getting so shiny and beautiful. Also pay attention to the Running Man Nebula, right above the Orion Nebula, where some of those bright stars are because it's getting a better shape using the filter. And now let's skip to 10 minutes. Look at the difference now. Actually, after these 10 minutes, I think it didn't add much more detail to the 25 minutes total exposure. Anyway, I didn't even care to change the settings during the live stack and I just took a screenshot with my smartphone. I didn't even wait to copy the files from the Dwarf Telescope which is even more amazing. I just cropped the screenshots and did a quick astrophotography with Topaz Denoise, link at the description. Then a tweak with Photoshop Express, a free software, and I leave up to you to judge the results. I have no doubt which one is better. It worked, yes! Now click on this link over here if you want to know more about this tiny smart telescope, the Dwarf 2.